This is a Philco T, uh, model T7126. It's a seven transistor radio from the 1950s. One of the first radios that Philco transistor radios that Philco ever built. And I'm going to try to fix it. It's going to be kind of a side project, you know. I'll work on it now, work on it later. I don't plan to do a YouTube series on the actual repair of the radio. But I wanted you to see uh, at least a reminder that I do have this radio. I did do a YouTube video on it on a while back. And I do have it pretty much torn apart right now. I've changed... So, uh, three of the electrolytics and checked out a bunch of solder joints that were really really crappy and I fixed the speaker that was torn and the next thing I need to do it's still a dead radio for some reason the next thing I need to do is start sending a signal through here and with a signal tracer and trace the signal you know using this schematic I have right here of the radio it's not going to be anything really complicated but the primary thing I wanted to talk to you about was how I plan to send that signal through, what kind of equipment I plan to use. And I will be using this little jewel right here. It's a Superior uh, Model 88 transistor radio tester. Uh, Rick McWhorter, All-American 5 Radio, did a couple of YouTube videos on this recently, and I was really impressed with this little thing. And I knew that I had not only had this radio, but I have another a Philco T7 that needs uh, repair. And I said, you know, this is going to be just the item I need, this little tester. And uh, let me tell you a little bit more about it. All right, this little baby uh, has a removable lid, which is what I like. It just slides right off. You can use it to hold your screws and your radios or whatever uh, as you tear them apart. Temporarily, of course, like this. Okay? And it'll hold your uh, instructions. Basically, what we have here is I'll just give you a rehash of what Rick uh, showed us in his video. You know, this thing is split into two pieces. The right-hand side is your signal tracer, a little amplifier with a, a speaker. And on the left-hand side is your signal generator. And it's also the section that tests the gain or the beta and leakage on this meter of individual transistors, which I may or may not have to do on this one right here because I don't know if the transistors are working or not. I just got this thing. It's going to generate a little tone for me, and then I'm going to pick up the tone in various places in the radio using the tracer. Now let me get the uh, wires plugged in. Well, before we do that, I'll tell you what. These are the wires that are used with the tracer on this side. This is the wire used with the signal generator on this side. So the signal goes in using these clips, and it gets tested using these. The red wire is used for testing RF signal, the RF coming in, and this gray wire with the black tip, the black uh, tip right there, is used for audio. And that's what I'll be using in this radio over here will be the audio probe. These three, if you'll check uh, Rick McWhorter's uh, two YouTube videos, in the second one he showed, I believe it's the second one, he shows you how he uses these to test two different transistors. So that's worthwhile checking out those two those two videos. But when he when he, I told Rick at the time, I said, you know, I've got to have one of these. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, turn it. I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll open up, let you see what's inside, and show you how I made a change with the battery arrangement. And then I'll flip it back over, and we'll plug this wire into here, and this wire into here, and we'll use the tracer to sample the signal coming out of the signal generator and see if we get any sound. The original battery pack for this thing was uh, three AA batteries in a cardboard box. And you bought the box and two wires came out of there. The batteries were in there and the two wires went around and would solder over here to this uh, unit right here, this component right here. Every time you needed to change batteries, you had to do a resolder job. You'd buy a new box of batteries and resolder it up. I didn't, I didn't like that. So I found a male-female plug, and I ran new wires from the uh, uh, male, 
and the, or from, I guess that's the female, and then uh, went ahead and put new wires to a battery pack holder that I got at Radio Shack. You know, as usual, Radio Shack never wants to cooperate on anything. They did not have a three battery, you know, holder for the double A's. So I said, well, give me the four. So they did, and I just used the extra compartment to run my wires through. It worked out pretty good. But anyway, I can now just plug and unplug as needed. And uh, the rest of it, I changed capacitors, as you can see, new electrolytics and a couple of resistors that were bad. This diode is good. And uh, let's flip it back over and uh, see if we can't get some noise here. Right now, I've got the battery pack just laying in there. I think what I'm going to do is put a little piece of Velcro on the bottom of that battery holder and then another, <clears throat> the other part of the Velcro on the bottom of the case. And just, you know, it'll be just a little round disc of it, maybe like that. And that way I can just go ahead and set the box on there. It'll stay in one spot. But it'll still be easy to remove when the time comes. I now have the signal generator lead connected. Let me show you how I did that. This is the primary. This is the lead right here. And this is the ground. I have that connected to the audio probe, like so. And I hooked the ground to the ground lead on the audio probe, even though it's really not needed for this purpose. And if everything is working fine, I should be generating a signal down this wire and picking it up in this wire. Let's find out. Let's turn up the volume. And there it is. It's also controlled the signal. Incidentally, the signal here is controlled by the attenuator, the signal side, and the, ampli uh, uh, the uh, volume is controlled by this volume control. And you know, that's not very loud, but yeah, I guess you really don't need it to be that loud. I talked to Rick about this. I said, how loud was yours? He said, well, it was pretty low. There's only two transistors in there. Uh, the third transistor is used for, for the oscillator. I said, okay, fine. And uh, the reason it's not that loud is once you inject it into the radio, the, if everything is functioning as it should be in certain areas, the radio transistors will boost it up anyway. It'll come up higher. It'll, the volume will increase automatically. And again, Rick shows that in the second video that he did on this uh, transistor tester, transistor radio tester. So that's it. There's just not much else to show. Uh, he shows you, Rick will show you how to use these buttons. Uh, primarily what I'm looking for here is just the on-off right now. And uh, I'm real happy to have this. I think this is really a slick little tester. I think everybody should have one. And that's about it. Runs off those three double A's, four and a half volts. Hope you liked it. Hope you get something out of it. Uh, incidentally, before I close out this video, there's really not a schematic uh, included in the manual for this thing. It's kind of a chintzy way of doing it. They have, you know, some schematic items that just go up to the circuit board to show the components. And uh, I, I don't, you know, if I were a new person just starting out and, and I didn't really, and something went wrong, uh, I wouldn't really know what to do based on what I see here. Also, one more thing. Uh, this oscillator coil here, L1 is, where does it say there, they call it the special oscillator coil. Uh, it shows a, a variable slug, it's a slug tuned coil, and Rick's model had a slug tuned coil, but mine does not. There is no slug tune on the top, they just have it anchored to the board with a bent piece of metal that's riveted down. So apparently uh, later, this is probably a later model, maybe an earlier model, this one's dated 1960. Uh, they either uh, eliminated it eliminated it after Rick's model or before his. I'm not sure which, but mine does not have that little deal right there.